Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the One Minute Writing Tip podcast. I am so excited for today's author guest. I'm talking to Z Laxon, author of the Wool Gathering series. Her first book, Reverie, was published in 2020. It was a finalist in the 2021 Illinois Author Project, and the sequel, Revenant, was published in 2021, and she just finished the first draft of book three, which is the final installment in the series. Z, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. So will you just get us started by sharing about your journey to writing and publishing your first book and really stepping into becoming an author? Writing was one of those things that you dream about a kid, but you don't expect to happen to you. It's like one of those things where you're like, it's so out there that it's never going to happen. So I never really did steps to reach it. It's not like, oh, I wanted to be a doctor. So I went to medical school and did that and everything. So my degree is actually in mechanical engineering, which has nothing to do with what I do. And I would write for fun, right? So not anything like high school and university level prerequisite courses is what I've got. I wrote this story. Their first draft of Reverie was actually completed in 2009. And I shared it with friends, very, very rough. And they liked it. And they said, you know, you should look into getting this published. And I thought, wow, I have such great friends, you know, thinking that they're just very supportive. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized that my target audience actually liked this, but I didn't really know how to get started. So we did the research. I met with writers group. My biggest thing was I found a writers group in my area. And I think they're hands-on and supportive and answered my questions and encouraged me was really what got me to it. And then in 2020, when my business had to shut down for a while, my husband goes, you really have no excuse. You should really work in this. So we did. Published Reverie in 2020. It was a dream come true. Mm. Wow, I love that. And and you shared so many amazing things that I think really resonate with a lot of people who have been where you, where you were and, and kind of just thought, oh, you know, it'd be a nice thing, but it's not, you know, it's not going to happen for me, right? Or, or they've had other people even tell them that, like, oh, it's, it, you know, it's not possible for, for us normal people, right? It's like a luck or chance thing, you know? <laughs> if you look at these classics and you read it and you go, how dare I compare myself to such greatness? Hmm. When you put yourself down, you don't give your chance, you don't give yourself a chance to shine. My hmm. husband is, can, continues to be my best supporter and a biggest cheerleader and he encourages me and he told me you know what this is going to be your first story it's probably not going to be your masterpiece because the deal here is you're supposed to get better the more you write it shouldn't be your masterpiece but you have to get it out there and I'm really glad he encouraged me I feel like this is what most authors need mm. yeah absolutely I, I I wholeheartedly agree and I think that one key element is that being a writer and putting your work out there is like you said, it's dynamically different than anything else you pursue. It's, it's not like here's, you know, step one and you go to school and then, you know, you just do residency or, or you have, you start your career, you know, there's so many different facets and, um, and unknowns, right. That you have to explore. So it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you do need that support. So I want to ask you, how prepared were you for what happened with your book once you actually pursued it more seriously? I was very unprepared that in the launch itself, when I had it, which was great, it, it went really well and I was very happy with it. Somebody purchased my book, took a picture of it and tried to tag me on Instagram. And I'm so unprepared, like so many authors out there have their Instagram page, they have their website, they have their newsletter, they have the step-by-step -step things they need to do before they launch their first book. And my Instagram was just a personal Instagram that took pictures of such random things with bad photographs. I was horrified. <laughs> and I had to like clean it up and everything. Very, very unprepared for this, but wholly grateful for what happened. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like you weren't quite expecting it to become a finalist, right, in the in the author project. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I was thrilled to be in the semifinalist. And I looked at the people that made it that far and I was so humbled. It's mm. like, I can't believe I made it this far. And then when it made the finalist, I was like, what? And it, it really was, they, they had those things where they say, oh, it was an honor just to be notified, just to be nominated. And you think it's BS, but no, it really was amazing to be nominated as part of it. Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. I I completely agree. And I think any level of award for a book is is worth noting and worth mentioning because it often is noted among a sea of other books that get submitted no matter what contest or or award or whatever it is. So yeah, absolutely. It's totally noteworthy. Um, so you've mentioned several times about the importance of community and having the right support. Uh, so talk a little bit more about having that community for you and how that really made the difference and set you up for success. You know, the really important thing is a lot of writers I've Mench- I've met have always been so supportive because the unique thing about being an author is that your market is always shared. There isn't really competition. It's not as if somebody's going to pick up your book and then never read any other book ever again. Likely they'll pick up your book, want to read more books, and then we'll pick up other authors as well. And so the more you encourage that community, the more you support other authors, it's a bigger chance for this net that goes over and your readers appreciate it because for them, they get to see the next thing they're going to read. So there really isn't, it's it's a weird, it's already, it's a, it's a very unique industry where you don't really have competition. So you shouldn't compete with other authors. And having that community is, is encouraging when you are down, when you're celebrating your wins, in a way that other people that aren't authors won't be able to understand what you're going through or celebrate with the way that you want to celebrate. Not to say that there aren't any toxic authors out there also. If you feel like you are with a community that is more jealous than they are supportive, you're not in the right community. And I promise you, there is a community out there that will embrace you and will encourage you and will grow with you. And that's what you need to find. Yeah, 100% agree. And you you nailed so many uh, encouraging and and really good points as well for, for our listeners and for aspiring authors and, um, and people who maybe feel alone or isolated or like they are unsupported. Because unfortunately, I think for a lot of people, there are people who have a good support network, like they have their spouse is supportive and their friends are supportive. But then there's other people that actually have the opposite. They have like the friends and family that you know, kind of project their own uh, doubts and fears about the process onto you. And they're like, oh, that's not possible for you. You shouldn't try. You shouldn't dream. And they, it's like very, a ne- it's like negative, you know, Absolutely. and lots of naysayers. Yeah. And so I think having the right author community can be so valuable in that regard as well, because you realize, oh, this is possible. I can do it. I am encouraged. I am supported. Um, I have people that isn't just one that says, yay, you can do it. Yay. The right community is also going to say, hey, that's not going to fly real well. Or how about you try this? Or this is going to be more uh, like accepted or this will resonate with your readers. It's not just, oh, they'll think to themselves, oh, that sucks, but they're going to encourage you anyway. No, they want you to get your best talent out there. That's a great community. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. And yeah, and I think for many authors that have succeeded, especially in the very beginning, it's been because they had the right support because a lot of, yeah, yeah. So, and they like for the other ones, a lot of times people experience putting something out there without the support and then being like, wait, what's like, nothing's happening, you know, and and then they get the support and it makes a huge difference. And the beauty of the internet or the beauty of being able to reach out and find somebody that's your community, that's not necessarily a mile away from you or next door is invaluable. That's something that people didn't have before the internet. So being mm-hmm. able to be social um, and whatever app, whatever you app you want to use for it, whatever social media network thing that you want to do, find the one that works for you and they'll, they'll be there. And yeah. I, again, there are toxic ones and then there are supportive ones and you have to choose. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. It it doesn't matter where you go. You just have to find the one that that works for you because, you know, some people are not comfortable with some platforms, you know, so it doesn't matter if you go to Facebook or LinkedIn, or if you go to Goodreads, or if you go to Pinterest, you know, or Reddit, there's always a community that you can connect with on the platform that resonates with you and that that works for you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And YouTube. I forgot YouTube. (laughs) Yeah. There are so many out there. There's, you know, it's, there has to be something and it right. opens up the entire world. This really is, there's no reason that you have to do it alone. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point, um, even if someone's not comfortable with social media or online platforms, there's usually a local group. 
you know, mm-hmm. and you can connect with those through, you know, NaNoWriMo or just through getting connected with your library and finding out what other local authors are around or whatever. I mean, there's always a way to connect with with local people. The first group I met was through my writers. The first writers group I met was through my library. I went there and I checked it out and they were a small group and they were very helpful. The reverie would not be where it was if it weren't for them. Mm. I, I genuinely believe that. They have so much credit to do with it. And it, it was not just... Um, it wasn't even just that they were going to listen to me or that they were going to applaud things because they didn't even hear the entire story when we were sharing things. But what they did suggest changed the story in such a way that I loved it. Mm. Like I would not have had this before. And it's additional resources. They say, hey, you might not have thought of this, but another thing you have to be concerned about is layout. And you're like, oh, I never even thought of that. I was always thinking, oh, just upload or whatever. And then they're like, everybody knows you need to find an editor, but you don't realize you need to find a layout person. Or how about your blurb? Is your blurb good enough? And having this kind of community around you to help you with things that you might not have thought of, it makes you feel empowered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and such good points there too, because yeah, I mean, there's just so many little aspects to the process that, you don't realize when it's your first book and it's like overcoming that that first hurdle and and learning all the different aspects and not having the right support can definitely make it feel so overwhelming um but but also like you you know it it helps you like you said have the right resources so that you can feel okay i didn't miss anything you know (laughs) in our tight-knit group that we've got now that's born out of meeting in different writing groups and and sharing our stories um, we have one that has published that like I was one of the I was one of the first that pub- that self-published and so they're like okay what road did you take and then they'll follow along we have one that's so strong in TikTok that I completely can't fathom how she does it but she's strong and she gives us suggestions she holds our hands teaches how to do it Another person knows how to write query letters. Another person knows how to do events. And we share our strengths together and it makes everybody succeed. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and ultimately, like it, it also equates out whenever you have your book launch, because then you have people that are rallying behind you and helping share it and help celebrate and really helps your book just set up for success and go a lot farther, which which makes all the difference, too. So actually, it's true. Even in the launch, if your friends come over and don't necessarily buy your book, the fact that they're there um, causes other people to be interested. They're like, oh, why is there a crowd over here? What are they talking about? And even if your friends who, let's say they don't read or they're not into it, but they attend and they talk about your book to your audience, that's a great help because you're not going to be able to talk to everybody in the launch. You're there, you're signing books. There are people all around you. People want to talk about your book, but you won't have the time. If you have your team there with you and they talk to these other people about your book, they're essentially your sales force, mm. whether or not they not they don't necessarily have to buy the book, but them there talking about it is loads helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And that's also a, a, a key point on because so many people focus on the book launch just online, but they don't they don't tap into their local market. And it's so valuable to also get in touch with your library, do a book signing locally, you know, set yourself up for success in those facets as well. So yeah, excellent. We're open to it now. Before, back in the day, it was like uh, maybe your local library goes, oh, I don't work with indie authors. I only buy from the major booksellers. Or back in the day, Barnes & Noble wouldn't buy anything if you were published through Amazon. Mm-hmm. There were delineations and lines that weren't that you couldn't cross. And some libraries were like, oh, sorry, you have to donate it. I can't buy it for you. Things like that. But now the lines are more blurred and they're more accepting of indie authors, which I think is great. And uh, they understand the power of self-publishing and now it's spreading. So really step in there and tap into your local market. They'll be there. They will celebrate you in such a way that the rest of the world won't. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's also a great way to, to get started in, you know, doing features and all kinds of stuff because local news, a lot of times loves to celebrate local authors, you know, it's like local news, you know, it's great. So, Yeah. So I have to ask you, um, as you're working on getting book three out in the series and and adding to the, what you've already built, I, uh, you know, what do you want to share with us about the series and about what to expect in the upcoming book? The upcoming book is very dramatic. And it's the first time that our protagonist, London, faces something that is uh, 
uh, it's almost like a malevolent force. Whereas in the first two books, it's really more of a, like a growing, uh, coming of age kind of thing where she's learning how to deal with things like a first love or social groups and making friends and things. But now it's turned into a big adventure and it's coming to head. So it's there's a lot on the line in this one. I'm very excited. Yeah, it sounds exciting. It sounds like, you know, like the, 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 the culmination of the character development and arc. And it's so exciting whenever you get to see that. So that's Accessible. great. <laughs> awesome. So so how can others connect with you and check out your books? Um, the best way is probably to link uh, Linktree because it has all the different links in there to reach me, whether it's on my website or on Goodreads or on Amazon or wherever. Um, that's probably the best way. Perfect. So for all my listeners, if you enjoy magical realism and coming of age stories, then definitely check out Z's The Wool Gathering series. I'll include her details in the description for you guys. Z, thank you again so much for joining me. It was so great to have you. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. So for all my listeners, thank you also for tuning in. I hope you leave a review wherever you're listening from and that you join me on the next one.